Get a grip on lighting back again. On today's show, we have Robert Soler, the co-founder of BIOS Lighting. If you haven't heard of them yet, you're probably not in lighting. Prior to his work at BIOS, his most prominent work was at Kennedy Space Center, hmm. where he was a subject matter expert for NASA's circadian lighting system to synchronize astronauts to a 24-hour cycle on board the International Space Station. So he didn't do much before that. He received a fellowship from the National Science Foundation and currently serves on the Light Advisory Committee for the International Well Building Standard. We're going to talk a little bit about his company here, BiosLighting.com. That's B-I-O-S-L-I-G-H-T-I-N-G.com. Greg, Eric, Bios Lighting, talk to us about it. Yeah, and this topic that we're going to dive into today is an exciting one. But so as we know from our many discussions, (laughs) it is. And experience, light can impact performance, mood, and well-being. We know that, right? Most interior lighting, though, lacks what's needed to achieve wellness benefits. But we can't really evaluate the wellness benefit potential until we can understand how deficient an existing space is until now. The Bio Circadian Audit is the first program to calculate the wellness benefits of an existing space and the boost of wellness benefits with simple and cost-effective upgrades. As a circadian auditor, you'll be trained by former NASA biological experts to make you the expert, and you'll receive custom scorecards created by BIOS that calculates the deficiencies the existing lighting has on performance and health. And for the first time, BIOS is providing you the capability to tell your clients exactly what they can expect from a proper circadian lighting system that is focused on wellness. To learn more about how to become an auditor and sign up, please visit biosinstitute.org slash circadian dash audit. And you can also give this podcast a listen because we're going to dive deep into it right here and now. Not only that, though, but the baseline is fundamental in any upgrade. You need to have a baseline that you're comparing against. That's how, oh, this is how much energy you're using every year. This is how much it costs you. If you switch to LED, you're going to reduce that by this much. We're talking about negative numbers. Yeah, it's going to disappear off your hydro bill. And you're going to save 500 bucks a month, 1500 bucks, whatever it is. You need that baseline. Love it. Um, National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, brother, where it all started. Get educated, get associated, go to nail.org. That's N-A-I-L-D dot org. What's up, Robert Soler? What do you got? Hey, guys. How you doing? How you all doing? <laughs> Good. Good. You, we've had you, uh, you were on the show in the past. Maybe it was a, one of the live IES shows, I think it was. Yeah, Strategies in Light, I think it was. That was yeah, it. We talking, I think light. we were talking about plant lighting at that time. We talked a little bit we about it. We probably were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. before we get into this program and, and dive into it, let's just cover your background again, as Mike kind of alluded to at the end, or at the beginning there. NASA? Yep. Yep. Uh, spent some time at uh, Kennedy Space Center, Space Life Sciences Lab. Um, it's all about, uh, over there, it's all about, um, you know, trying to do colonization for the moon and Mars. So how to sustain life, you know, how to grow your own food, how to, you know, fend off bugs, how to, um, you know, sustain, you know, sleep and um, team cohesion. That was, uh, that was what we did. And I was the lighting guy there. So I did a ton of bio- photobiological experiments uh, with all these great um, biologists, microbiologists, uh, circadian rhythm uh, physiologists, uh, and plant physiologists. It was, a, it was a fun time for sure. What years were you there? Uh, right out of school. So 2007. Um, I left in 2009, uh, but still worked with them. Um, I still work with them now on uh, any time there's lighting, lighting stuff that comes up. Um, I did some stuff for the Orion capsule, which is, uh, what, you know, it's the capsule that's going to eventually get, get them to Mars. Uh, so I still kind of keep in touch, but the, you know, the lighting stuff is, is sparse. So, um, so I just kind of do stuff here and there on the side. Has the lighting been figured out for colonization? Well, there's always stuff to learn, right? There's always stuff to learn. This, this, the biology is is really interesting, and and we keep learning more, and the science is progressing. But uh, but I think we know enough to do some some good things here on Earth. So that's uh, that's what's exciting. Good. And when did bio start? Bio sliding. Uh, six years ago. So I um we started this company six years ago, and actually it was because of the um the whole circadian lighting on space station. Uh, we were, I won't say who it was, but we were trying to get a custom LED from uh, one of the big LED suppliers. And they said, 
You know, Robert, that's that's a great that's a great story, but how many space stations are there? I can't I can't justify you know making this stuff for uh, for one little space station. And so that was the time that we kind of said, you know what, uh, maybe we should start um, doing it ourselves and kind of leading leading by example. And so that's what we okay. did. We strove to to do it six years. That's ago. when accountants run companies. Like that's so you know like the accountants running the company. Yeah, he, absolutely. He, yeah, you know, it's like oh, there's a bean counter in charge. Whoever you ask, for sure. There's some guy who's got an accounting degree, never right. been in the lighting right. business. That that made right. that decision. I hate to say it, but yeah, you know, it's uh, that's a tough one to digest. If you if you're looking back, you could have been involved in a space station project. Hey, eh? no, not 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 for us. Come on, man. Yeah, get a yeah. grip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so biosliding I, I know a little bit but for the people who might not what all do, do you guys do other we're, we're going to get into this audit next but i mean yep, as, in sure. terms of product and things what is yeah, what is bio so we're we're the uh only biology first company so so that means that we're only thinking about biological lighting so we do circadian rhythms um on the human side and we do um plant horticulture lighting on the horticulture side on the human side we create the um the light engines and the technology that goes inside fixtures. And then we partner with um, OEM manufacturers. Oh, I think we're over 30 uh, partners now that, um, that basically integrate our technology. So this is good for um, anyone who's out there. You know, they probably already know this, but you could basically take the BIOS technology, take that story, and you probably have five, 10 lines that have that, that capability to unlock. So when you talk to somebody, all the lights are gonna match. Everything is going to have the same um, the same sky blue story that we've uh, that we've created, um, spectrally optimizing and and the the value that we do um, compared to kind of color tuning is that we put the the key wavelengths inside, so you get the circadian benefits you need in color temperatures you actually want. So we get the heightened sky blue in four thousand Kelvin, thirty five hundred Kelvin, which is what you're mostly installing in all these spaces. So. When everyone else is trying to do color tuning, you got to go to 6,500 Kelvin, and nobody nobody wants that generally. So that's a kind of our, our main value proposition is you get those circadian benefits and color temperatures you actually are going to put in a space. There's a lot of – so I've interviewed a lot of people on this topic, and mm -hmm. there's often you know greater alertness, less sick days, feeling better, all this kind of stuff comes out. Um, I've come to the conclusion – amateurishly maybe but nonetheless a conclusion that all of the the benefits that are derived from you know circadian wellness come from better sleep and anything else is secondary would you agree with that assertion um so there has been so no uh, because if you so there's acute effects and then there's long-term effects so so circadian lighting will help you fall asleep or will help you sleep better the next night. Um, but right now, when you get it, you'll actually be more alert. You'll have better cognition. Um, you'll just be, it'll drive the daytimeness um, functions that we do as humans. So, and those things actually lead to better sleep also. So it is actually both things. The stuff that's happening right now, which is acutely better performance, better cognition, um, better, you know, working memory, like you have better memory at these times. And it's all driven directly from light, better mood um, directly. You're getting it instantly. The downstream effects are that you get better sleep, which does help you the next day. But these things actually work in unison with, the, with one another. They are synergistic with one another. You get better sleep, that does help you the next day. But today, you get more energy, more alertness, and that actually also helps you get more sleep. Well, I so don't not believe you. Works. I don't not believe it, but I want to ask you a couple more questions, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I know that you can hurt people with light, right? So, you know, if you want to, you, know, uh, you know, casinos have known this for oh, decades, sure. that if you shine, you know, white lights directly on a vertical axis into someone's eyes, it will put them into a trance, somewhat of a trance state, which will cause them to give the casino their paycheck. Um, so we know that do you, and, and that's intuitively, obviously they know that it works. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if they've tested on people, but they, you know, generally go into a casino, you're going to have a lot of vertical high Kelvin temperature illumination pointed directly into people's eyes at very high lux levels. Okay. Yep. Sitting in front of a, 
uh, slot machine, it's hitting you with very high light. Now, what whatever that's doing, is it creating concentration? Is it making people more alert? How does what you're talking about differ from the casino experience? Are they doing the same thing that you're talking about? Yeah, they're absolutely doing the same thing. They're trying to give you that alertness so that you're not too sleepy to go back to your room and, and call it a night. They want you to stay there on the floor. So the concentration is probably not, not what they want, but they want that alertness. They want you to have the energy to keep going and stay there on that floor because every minute you're on there is a minute that they're making money. So you're, you're redeploying those, the, that intuition of mine in a manner which actually doesn't hurt people anymore. Now it's helping them do a job better or what have you. Yep, yep, and and we're doing um, we're doing studies right now um, on that. Not that this light helps you sleep, but this light at this moment helps you um, do better on these like cognitive tasks. Um, so that basically help you work better, work faster, and feel better doing it. We're doing that right now, and it's um, independent of sleep. So video games. So oftentimes people will play video games and they'll play video games for hours and hours and hours. And one of the effects of this is sitting in a dark room and staring at a very bright vertical screen, very close where the light is going directly into their eyes as well. Is that the same effect that you're talking about? You're just redeploying it in a different way? Uh, that's a, that's a similar effect. That's what's keeping them up. I mean, the cog the cognitive like connection to the video game obviously is keeping sure. them going as well, but the light is, is definitely keeping them going too. Um, depending on what the content is on that screen for sure. So then, then, so then you're, but then how do you control for people's, um, cycles? So for example, you know, in NASA, you, you have no, it, when you're when you're making these for someone in a space station, there's no nighttime for them specifically. I don't know if they're going around the moon and it gets darker. I mean, going around the Earth and they have dark time and nighttime. I don't know how it all works up there. But if you're looking at those kind of situations, you're saying, we don't have an Earth-based day and night cycle. And so what we're going to do is present the person with this controlled dose of light during this period of time. And then we're going to mm -hmm. give them the offsetting controlled dose of darkness for this amount of time, and this will allow them to maintain a circadian rhythm and keep them healthier and happier and in a better mood and all that sort of stuff. How do you get this technology into a situation where you don't have those unintended consequences of people being uh, um, exposed to light levels at the wrong time or the wrong dose at the wrong moment, which is going to then affect their sleep, which is going to reverse all the gains that we, we see from, from lighting? Um, well, so the, let's see. So if they're up all night gaming, so let's just assume that they have to go to school. They have social, you know, obligations. They have to go sure. to school. They have to go to work. And this is kind of during their daytime hours. Gaming is kind of off that time. Just by putting the right daytime lighting in those environments, that's kind of trying to do better. So there's the daytime portion of it. So you want to have as much brighter, you know, brighter days and darker nights as the point. But you want to have as much of that bright, you know, light in their kind of social daytime setting. So if they're working at that workspace, if they're um, going to school in that school space, um, whatever they're doing, that's what you want to do. And that's so by providing the brighter days, you're effectively making the nights a little bit darker. And that's important. I think that uh, an analogy. By contrast? This, by contrast? Exactly. Exactly. So contrast is, is a huge part. They're relative to one another. Day is rel or night is relative to day and day is relative to night. But um, I, I have a lot of people who kind of go, oh, well, if you're not doing everything, you know, 24 hours, then, you know, how can we really say we're doing much of anything at mm -hmm. all? Um, but like the, the real world is, is messy, man. The real world is messy. Sure. Sure. You know, and we try to do as best we can, given the fact that people are going to, you know, we all have free will and we have the ability to do whatever we want, but you could do better. And so the way that I think about this is um, like daytime, daytime circadian lighting and nighttime circadian lighting is analogous to like working out and eating right. You know, yes, you're going to get the best results if you do both of them together, but that doesn't mean just doing one isn't going to be good for you, right? You, your doctor's not going to say, well, you're not going to eat right, so eh, don't worry about working out. You don't need to do that. They're going to definitely say that you should do one of the two things. Greg sure. wants to talk about the audit where he's going to make millions and millions of dollars selling circadian-friendly systems. <laughs> but I got one more kind of point I want. Yeah. And I'm I actually very interested in that too, so it's not, not to worry. But 
Um, I wanted to address um, the, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought there. I wanted to address the idea that um, when we're, as an industry, going out and deploying things to people, how can we help the end users separate the marketing and labels on boxes? Um, there's a lot of that. You can even see it in Home Depot now, you know, mm -hmm. and you look at that's hogwash, man. Like there's, there, there's, there's, there, there, this is not as simple as buying a light bulb. Maybe it is, maybe I'm wrong. How do we sep how can the industry speak to those, those end users and give them a clear message? It is, you know, that is, that's a, that's a tough question because there is a lot of noise and there's a lot of stuff out there. I think that the, um, the, the consensus is we try to do brighter days, darker nights, and brighter is bluer sometimes kind of tells you that it's, it's kind of brighter, mm -hmm. and yellower sometimes tells you that it's uh, darker. So uh, there's not, it's not terrible hogwash, but, um, but really, I mean, spectrum is, is the main thing that we have to focus on. Intensity and spectrum is a key thing. Some of these things have a large visual effect, minimal biological effect, but I still think anything that's kind of moving in that direction is still better than what we're currently doing, which is absolutely nothing. So, so it's what, not hogwash. It's just a small step in the right direction. What we're more, trying to do is make these larger steps. One right more direction. point, Greg, before we get to the audit. We had Good Light Group. Is a Good Light organ is a Good Light Group, Greg? Good Light Group, yeah. From Europe. They're out of Amsterdam, former Signify executives running that. Um and I was, you know, very gentleman, great guy. I was very skeptical of this claim, though. Um, he was talking about, and I di didn't realize it while I was talking to him, but he, he was insisting that 1,000 to 2,000 lux on a vertical axis will create, is what we need in the interior environment. That's like double a paint booth. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's like that's taking a paint booth and timesing it by two or four. And I don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. been in a paint booth where they paint cars or whatever, yeah. they, where you seal it off so you don't have dust or anything like that. Like that's really a lot of pressure from the light. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? And I don't mean to create controversy or scandal, but I felt like that's a, that's first of all, I don't know if that's energy responsible. Um, but <laughs> second of all, do you not think that there will be unintended consequences of something like that? Uh, so the unintended consequences, that's an interesting point. So, uh, so certainly from a glare standpoint, you got to do it where it's, you know, people actually will want to stay in that space, which is, uh, the biggest challenge. But so from a biological standard, yes, one to 2000 Lux will get the job done. <laughs> I don't think that there's a, uh, any question about that. There is, you know, concerns about how you could actually do that without it being super glary. Um, but the level is much lower than that, way lower than that. And that's, that's actually what this circadian audit is trying to do is like, let's quantify it because yes, 2000 Lux will get the job done, but let's think about, you know, what's actually sustainable, what is actually comfortable, what's actually going to really do something and push this, this world forward. And that's what we're trying to do. So, good. So before we get into that, I got one more product related question. You said you make the light engines. Are you talking the chips and the drivers? Is that what you do? Uh, chips and uh, a control module. So we work with standard standard drivers. So we're um, driver okay. agnostic. But we make the okay. chips. Uh, we partnered with LumaLeds um, on the chips. Uh, we make the L2 light engines, and we have a little bio dimming module that um, that kind of could kind of take a single zero to ten and do the whole day night transition. So high up is day. As you dim it down, it pulls out the sky blue frequencies. Um, it creates a nice in a in a really easy way. I know there's a lot of guys or controls guys who want to sell controls of circadian lighting, but man, um, when you do like those advanced controls, Dolly, DMX, two zero tens, uh, the contractors making a lot of money too because every time they see it, they go, "Oh, this is this is complicated. It's two x, three x, four x of what I normally charge for these things." So, uh, so that's a good way to to um, keep the money out of the, you know, the contractor's pocket and put into, into your own. Good deal. Well, let's dive into the audit, the circadian audit. Break it down for us. How does it work? What is it all about? What do we do to take part in it? 
Yeah. So this is um, so this is just something we des designed as a way to sell human centric lighting, circadian lighting. Um, and the reason why is because biological lighting, this human centric lighting requires more light than what traditional lights do for vision. When you design something, it's just not giving you enough. So we created this way to to quantify it. So when you don't get enough light, the consequences of not having enough light is decreases in performance, problem sleeping, potential for weight gain, um, you know, increased addiction. So there's lots of health issues associated with it. You're just not getting the stimulation and you're, you're trying to um, do other things. So, um, so the best way to illustrate the benefits is really not that, that the existing light, that circadian lighting or human centric lighting is gonna do all these magical things. If you're getting plenty of daylight, it's not going to do all these magical things. It's the fact that the existing lighting is really robbing you of these things. Um, so the best way to illustrate the benefits is by showing people the difference, actually going in, measuring them, showing them what the spectrum looks like, quantifying the biological metrics. And then we create a scorecard and it basically turns that into an application that says, hey, you're probably losing about 30 minutes a day in productivity per employee based on this lighting criteria. You're, this is probably leading to sleep issues. This is probably leading to um, increased risk, risk of obesity. This is probably gonna lead to, um, so the way that we do it, like um, a moderate increase in, in uh, weight gain, a moderate increase in um, addiction, um, the risk of addiction. So these are the things that you can quantify, but you, can you can't quantify it until you actually measure something. And that's the problem that currently we have is that the marketing people are promising all these things, but you can't really promise it. It, 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 it assumes that everything is currently bad. And to really quantify or calculate how good this is gonna be, you actually have to measure how bad the current space is. And I think that that's the missing piece that people, are, um, that people have had a struggle with is because we wanna sell this stuff and all the, the clients who are listening are kind of skeptical that this is really going to do all these wonderful things. So you have to almost like kind of show them, no, I'm not saying that's, or they're freaked out because they're like, well, this sounds weird. Why is it going to give me all this stimulation and all this like things that are going to alert me? Like, what is this? So it's, it's not about that. It's going to do anything artificial. It's that what we're currently doing is putting us in the dark and it's, it's giving us these deficiencies. And I think that, um, I estimate about 87% of spaces fall into this category of being biologically deficient and will benefit from this. So there's a huge opportunity here, but you gotta show them it'll work. Otherwise it, they're, you know, they're gonna be skeptical. If and I it's were not you, obvious. If I were you, yeah. yep. I would focus all of my research to prove that your lighting system or that this lighting system could increase libido and help with erectile dysfunction. If that, if you could prove that, I'm telling you, brother, people would go shit show for, for this. Uh, it would get their attention. I could see the article in the New York Times right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, man, you got to come up with the specifics. There's not enough specifics. Oh, it makes mm -hmm. you more alert. It makes you like this. Da -da 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 -da. We need specifics. We need selling points in the field. I'm telling you, man, there's all this talk about 30 minutes a day. It's like a cup of coffee. And, you know, people don't get it. We need something to really grab onto and hold on to. I wish that, you know, something that, you know, everyone could benefit. I know because, but everything's so broad, you know, when mm -hmm. we're talking about this topic. It's very broad. I think we need specifics like, you know, narcolepsy. It, this is people, you know, if it, 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 we've proven that those who suffer from narcolepsy, uh, it's the kind of stuff that Dr. Figaro comes out with, with the um, patients that have Alzheimer's, proven sleep mm -hmm. improvements. Okay, there are not that many people that have Alzheimer's, you know? Right. So can we get things that, you know, people working in the office, cross the board, this, it helps with this. You know, um, Dr. Wilkins proved that T8, uh, electronic ballasts with 60,000 hertz and reduce headaches by, you know, 45% or 65%. He proved it, proven, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it works. I, I don't see from the community, the circadian wellness, um, thing, is there, I, we need, it's in the field. We need specifics. You agree, Greg, first of all, do you agree with me? Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. To be able to sell it, we need, uh, cause right now to say like, we're used to saying you're going to save this much energy and this Ooh. is what it's going to be, you know? And, and <laughs> now it's like, you might, 
get this and you might get that. And that just might be what it is. But that's what we're asking is, is there anything we can specifically define? Yeah, um, productivity. I mean, that's that's the big thing. I mean, we, we you know, it's what a 330, 300 rule. So, you know, you've been saving the energy, which is the $3 per square foot. Um, we're trying to save productivity, which is the $300 per square foot. It's the most expensive thing in the building. So, um, and we're, we're trying to do is show it, show that you could, well, show that you're losing this much productivity given this lighting scenario. And we're going to basically be able to, to recover that. That's, that's real dollars. That's so I agree with you. I, I agree with you in, in the, in the assertion that the 300 is, is yes, that's the golden grail, the Holy grail or whatever you call it. Agreed. That's not, that's not disputed. But I think what, you know, the idea of productivity, productivity needs to be measured, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about, you know, there hasn't been increases in productivity. Well, that's because most devices aren't made to make you more productive. They're made to make you less productive now. So um, you buy an iPhone, yeah, it may have a Google map on it, but it had a Google map on it 12 years ago. Um, now what it is, it has all these addictive games and things that keep you staring at it and stop you from working. So how, when we're talking about productivity, how does it specifically make people do their jobs better other than they feel better or they're not staying home being sick more? Like what are some specifics we can work with here? Yeah, so there. Uh, so we're working with Harvard right now to do clinical trials on this, and it's that's uh, what we a co- need. Cognitive yes. battery that says um, that they are doing better memory recalls, so remembering stuff instantly, remembering stuff later in the day. Um, they're doing a cognitive battery. We're showing that they're they're uh, more responsive um, to things. It's it's exactly all these things that are not exactly productivity. But it is things that should lead to productivity. You're going to remember things better in the office. You're going I would, to I would to even do like a sample where people are taking the MCAT or the LSAT or something like that. If you guys could arrange for like those kinds of situations where, hey, the average score on the test over 10 mm-hmm. tests with this and with in this system and the base case here, and this is the new system, the average score was 3% higher. That's, that would be massive for um adoption if we could if we had some specifics to point to you know memory recall um Mm -hmm. you know uh tactile function um you know uh dexterity uh the improvements things like that man i'm you know lack of mistakes in the manufacturing process error reduction and and these types of metrics you'd see much faster adoption than sort of the productivity is kind of like a really you know people like they're not they want to know specifically what you're talking about so i'm glad you guys are doing those studies very very happy yep yeah so so the concluding in next month so uh we'll we'll have those results hopefully soon Looking Good. forward to it, man. So, yeah. as of right now, with this audit, you're saying go in and measure the deficiencies. So, how do I do that? What do I bring a light meter around? What exactly? Yeah. Is so we we actually train you. So there's a there's a 90 minute course. You you take the course. You take a quick test. Uh, we you know the one thing that you need to have is a spectrometer to be able to measure spectrum to get the the um, biological criteria. Um, then you you fill out this form that we we provide you send it to us and we turn it into a scorecard. So we do, um, we basically create this, what you measure, turn it into something that basically estimates the biological outcomes of this existing lighting, which exemplifies the benefit that you could have. Can you define that or is that part of the exclusivity of the course? Like uh, I'm wondering what specific measures you want when I go into a space and, and you know, every yeah. building has multiple rooms. You got an office, you got a warehouse, you got a bathroom, you got a lunchroom, whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's uh, it's vertical lux, uh, four foot above finished floor. Um, you do it. Um, you take two measurements, one with the lights on, one with the lights off, so you can calculate, uh, capture some of the daylight con- contributions. You do. Um, we have our criteria is four, four uh, measurements per thousand square feet, and you go across the room. You basically do all these measurements, and you report. Do the report. If you have different spaces, then each space would require a different report. Um, so the, the manufacturing space would have a report, the office space would have a report, you know, any other spaces that you have would have, you know, want to have its own dedicated report. So you just make those measurements. Um, we recommend for consistency, you take a tripod, kind of attach that, uh, spectrometer to a tripod, um, just kind of drag it around lights on lights off. 
It is uh, just a handful of, of measurements, and then um, you send it to us, and we, we process it um, in minutes uh, because we have this algorithm and everything's already ready to go. And um, we send it back to you, and and you've got a uh, you've got an analysis of what that lighting that lighting space is, and what the what the consequences are of that lighting space. It so might be good. Diff- it oh, might be bad, yeah. but most the, most times it's going to be bad. What do you call this? Or uh, like what do you, what do you call audit? it? Circadian audit, eh? Circadian. Yeah. Audit. So I've always struggled with the name. For this, mm-hmm. what we're talking about, it's like circadian photobiology or like you know, wellness lighting, integrative lighting. You know, I, I asked Dr. Jenner for Veach, what it, it's tough to name it, you know, mm-hmm. what it is. I agree. You know, we need the it's like people speak truth to power. Everyone says, no, everyone says that. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. Everyone's speaking truth to power about everything now, but we need words to describe it. You know, when we're talking to those clients and a name for it, we, yeah, we're going to do this kind of audit, circadian audit. I don't know if that's, if that's going to, people are going to go, okay. You know, I, I wonder if there's a better name, Greg, mm. like we can name it something that gives the, that names it the result of what you get in the end. You know, I, I would, I, I, you know, it's like, I'm not criticizing you. I think circadian audit yeah. is mm. obviously, but I don't know if my customers are going to know what the hell I'm talking about if I do that. Like, if I, hey, we're going to do a circadian too, audit. That, that, that might be a good thing. They might be like, this guy's an expert. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, like, I'm, try, I'm thinking about selling it. Like, I'm thinking about, you know, calling up, getting a, you know, go call, t- call 100 people today and see if you can find someone that's interested in a circadian audit. It's like, hmm. You know, a person, like a productivity audit or something like that. Yeah, that, or like a lighting. Like, yeah, light. I, there's light gotta be a productivity audit. Yeah, I, you know, or functional lighting. Um, you know, whatever. I don't know, but it, I, I just think that it, it needs sexier words because when you're talking to people, you're talking to a facility manager on the phone, and you're trying to talk them into something, you got about fifty seconds to hook them. Yep. Or her to hook them in. Right. right. We, we, you know, with the uh, LED, we say, hey, you're going to save a ton of energy. Your light's going to be better. And the government's going to pay for a huge chunk of it. You interested in that? Right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. I'm, I'm more light, less energy. Government pays for something. Boom. I get it. Okay. What else do you got? We need something like a hook, like, mm-hmm. I, you know, to really sell a lot of this stuff, Greg. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the name to me isn't as important right now. I want all the details and oh. the name's going to come. So, think listen, so I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. All yeah. Right. So I get this scorecard. All right. And the yeah, scorecard, right. how many different items are on the scorecard or what, what what's an uh, example what the scorecard will tell me five so there's five things so uh so okay. it gives you a, a light um a light score from zero to 100 uh that's not one of the things and then it gives you an estimate of what that means for productivity lost um what that means for sleep issues um what that means for weight issues increased risk of weight issues uh what that means for increased risk of addiction and what that um, means for increased risk of um, mental disorders like mood or attention deficits. So those are kind of the five criteria. So when you see it, you go, okay, this is this is what this lighting is currently doing. And I think that anyone who looks at this is going to go, well, shoot, I probably should do something about this. Get your checkbook I out. I had no idea <laughs> that that this lighting was leading yeah. to this stuff because it doesn't feel dark, but. I guess, like, and, and when you show them the me- meter and show them that, like, you know, it's the sky blue frequencies that are driving all this stuff, and you show them a, a LED spectrum that's like just has this huge dip in the sky blue region, they're like, oh, okay. Now I, I had no idea. And what are you going to sell me that's going to fix all this? And you throw in something that, that has all those things filled in and meets all those criteria. And then all of a sudden, it's just an education piece where they go, okay, well, we got to do this. That's at least how I feel about it. That when you yeah. present this information in this way, people have to do something about it. Now we do give two scorecards. One that has those those um, those health consequences because it does kind of push that envelope, and then there's also the uh, scorecard that doesn't have those health consequences because some people may be a little uneasy about it. There might be you know uh, where they go, oh, I don't know if I feel right talking about these things or. Um, you know, I, maybe the end user says, oh, I want this, but I don't want to know the health consequences because now I feel like I'm legally obligated to do something about it. So we give that mm. option so that people could kind of mm. 
make a decision on their own and and the auditors will kind of figure that out along the way to go okay these guys might be you know we might might want to not hard sell them maybe just kind of give them a light a light push and see what they could do so, to improve yeah what are so the number you said zero to a hundred for the first the other four criteria is it a percentage and and i guess exactly yeah how does that work again so it just goes to um to the increased risk it's either low moderate uh high let's see it's low moderate um high so the increased risk this is just standard um standard talk of of how we do um how we talk about medical things like you know going to mcdonald's is isn't going to make you fat but it definitely increases your risk of becoming fat right so so this is what it does this lighting isn't going to make you fat but it increases your risk it moderately increases your risk of, of becoming overweight because you're going to make because you're more tired you're going to make less uh um less wise choices on what you eat your cravings go up um, so it's it's absolutely been documented by science. We have citations for everything that we do here. So it's all documented in the science that has been going on for, for about 20, 30 years now in the effects of okay. light, circadian rhythms, and um, and weight gain, addiction, obesity, um, mood, and productivity, sleep, all these things. Okay, so you, you go on site, you do these measurements that you're asking for. In addition to that, we are counting the lights still. We're figuring out where they're at and, yep. and everything. And then, then we put it all together. We get your scorecard. We do our normal audit. But how do we then provide the recommendation? We go back to, to BIOS to help um, tell us how many fixtures are needed, You know what the layout should look like. What, what do we do there? Right. Um, yeah, so then, um, so then we kind of give you a synopsis of like what is generally accepted. So we have a designer on staff. We could do designs here. We could give you training modules of how to do it. Generally speaking, um, on the criteria, um, so we there's like a good, which is about 150 melanopic lux, better, which is about 200, and then best is about 275. Um, and that that probably so that there was a paper that just came out that said 275 was the criteria that we should all be striving for. Um, and that's vertical. So that's vertical. Melanopic lux vertically, 275 is is the criteria that we should all be striving for. Get ready to um, sell a lot of light fixtures, Greg Eric. Hmm. Gonna measure my so, wall right now. <laughs> that's right. Um, so generally speaking, to get to the good, um, if you take the general illumination and just replace it with BIOS, that'll give you the spectral boost that you probably need to get about um, to that good level. Better is probably maybe higher fixture density. Uh, maybe some luminous, uh, like luminous pendants or something that's going to have more vertical light to it. Um, and then best is going to be probably supplemental lighting. And uh, one of the things that we um, as auditor, you know, auditors will get access to, we created this, um, this product called Skyview. Um, it's designed to be a personalized desk. You can kind of see it in my reflection back here. Um, it's this gradient of blue and, and white that kind of creates what's going on outside. But it's designed to be right here. It's it's like you kind of see the glow off my hand, uh -huh. um, but it, it illuminates at my face. It gives me 200 EML right just by itself, all by itself. So that's added on to what you're doing. So that's another thing that auditors get wholesale pricing to this. So that's a really easy way to get in, get out, kind of sell the thing and um, and get the new scorecard. And people, will, you know, probably pass with flying colors just just it, as easy as that. that. Yeah, is that device portable, like has a stand, or do you actually need to affix it to something and get wiring to it? No, it's uh, it's portable, plugs in, uh, app app controlled, so you just, uh, and it automatically goes. So it has these colors, um, kind of a blue sky and a warm sun, and at the end of the day, that blue goes to purple, and the warm, the warm whites goes to red, and it actually creates a sunset that's, that's specific to you, your rhythm, uh, very simple, and then goes drifts off into nighttime mode, and then comes back on with a, a sunrise. So it's uh, it's very easy. Um, it's probably going to be the most cost effective solution when you take into account the retrofit, the the contractor costs, everything that goes into to getting things. Unless we have retro, unless you do a retrofit kit, uh, which we do have from some of our partners, that's really quick and easy. Um, so there's a lot of there's a, a lot of good options that are out there, but 
this gives you not only a tool, but it gives you, you know, another thing to, to sell as well. What's that device called? Cool. Yeah. Skyview. Yeah, I'm looking yeah, at it online. One. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, that's a nice, it's a nice product. Um, and I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, if you're, if you're not a lighting professional listening to this and you want to do something right now, you can buy the Skyview lamp. <laughs> it's yep. a nice product. Yep. Uh, I've seen it. Um, you know, what are some, so oftentimes we'll do a, a lighting project for someone where they want to save energy. Okay. And then a couple months later, they'll call us up and say, Hey, we didn't save any energy. And, you know, so we'll we send me, you know, your hydro bills or whatever, your electricity bills. And then we'll look at it and, you know, we'll prove it to them on their electricity bills, you know, where they save the money. Cause you know, if they add a shift or they change something or who knows, but we always deliver. I've never not delivered. Maybe one in a hundred customers ask for that sort of in-depth analysis, but we're happy to provide it. I always see it as mm -hmm. a learning experience for the, the rep that's working that project. Yeah, man, you, you're not talking shit. Let's go and, and, and show them that they saved energy. And so right. what, what are some of the, and like, so someone, go, you know, goes through the auditing process. Okay. They then adopt the technology. It's installed. Um, how can we then verify the results for them? Well, you could do an audit afterwards and kind of see the, the before and after. Um, really, when it comes to quantifying it, uh, what I've learned, because <laughs> we've tried, we've tried to quantify it in the field. Mm -hmm. Nobody has time to actually do the tests and the assays to do it, but we'll absolutely assist in, in uh, providing those, those tests in order to quantify it and quantify that they're better. Uh, so, that's, um, so that's something we would offer, and I would guarantee you, uh, like it would be in this one out of a hundred will actually take you up on it and go, all right, let's do the test yeah. to see what, what we actually got out of it. I was laughing but, uh, because I was <laughs> just picturing some guy. Yeah. You know, Jimmy stopped doing Coke and now Johnny uh, did, lost his narcolepsy. And, you know, I, I mean, you, it's, it's, it, this is a, it's a tougher thing. I, I think, you know, from my perspective, the verification side is still in development, I think. You know, mm -hmm. on this, I mean, uh, again, I'll bring up Dr. Figueroa and Dr. Ray, where they they actually have proof, the you know that, um, you know, these things are helping these Alzheimer dementia patients. They know for sure; it's not a question. It's a similar technology that what you're talking about. I'm wondering whether there's, you know, some way that a lighting distributor in the field after a project sold or during the project can speak to some of this verification after. Um, and you're saying that you can help with that, but perhaps that's still in, in development. We're into a new technology here, Greg. Yeah, yes, I mean, no, uh, proof's kind of in the pudding. I mean, I, everyone who has a Skyview, they absolutely, like, they love it. They and, and when they go travel or when they don't have it, they, like, feel like they're they're missing it. It's, it's, it's one of those things that you almost get addicted to this light. So I, and, and the reviews that we have on our website are just, like, phenomenal. Everyone who does it just say it, it makes the world of difference. So, I mean, the science is there. Um, people are going to, they're going to feel it. They're going to know what it is. And, and, um, and I don't, I, I have no concern. So if they want to put a test to it, I'll, we'll do it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say to my customer, you're going to know when I'm done, brother. <laughs> you're going to know. In fact, you don't have to pay unless you feel. I'd love to do that see what happens. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Like I, I do that. Yeah. I've done that over the years. I've done pay from like uh, shared savings contracts where we literally take a percentage yeah. of the savings from a customer. I want to ask you about prescriptiveness. Okay. So this is a prescriptive technology. You don't get to choose, right? It's not like, you know, Sally that says the lights are too bright. You say too bad, Sally, you're better off. You know, it's prescriptive. How do you then, because in, in the, in the human centric space, lighting space, um, there's this idea of tuning and having your own personalized control of your lighting. And then there's yep. your circadian wellness. And these, these two trains need to crash into each other and one needs to lose or whatever. And one needs to be adopted as it there's the, the choice factor is, is always troubling to me because I find it a lot easier to sell tuning, you know, Here's you have choice over the color of your light, and you can set the light level you want. I find people naturally gravitate to choice, and tuning is very intuitive. You know, oh, it's mm -hmm. just like a dimmer. You just tune the lights. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, I'll take one of those for, you know, twenty percent more on top of the project. But this human centric play, these things are prescriptive. You have to do what you're told by BIOS and by Lighting Solutions and Premier Lighting. 
how do we tackle that, the resistance there's going to be to that? Because people don't like being told what to do. And oftentimes, yeah, no, the I... first thing you do when you give someone a dimmer is they dim it. You know, the first thing they do with lighting is they dim the lights. That's a... Mm -hmm. That's a, a phenomenon I've observed over and over and over again. And one of the things when we're doing a retrofit is I like to go in at night. And if it's just like a straight retrofit, I like to do it and get everything done. So people come in the next day and they don't even notice something's happened. You know, it's like a heist. Get in, get out, get your right. money and divide it up. Um, you know, how do we deal with the prescriptive nature of this from a sales perspective? That's going to be, there's going to be some resistance there, some friction. Yeah, so I think that there. Uh, so if you want it to be lower, I think that you should totally make it lower. the uh, the The reality is that we're, you know, the three of us may have different sensitivities. This two seventy five is is very. Um, it's going to make it's it covers the majority of people, but there's always outliers that that are saying like, oh, this is this is too bright, and they're probably more sensitive. So two seventy five might not be their number. Their m number might be much lower. So so they could absolutely dim it down and 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 have what's what feels comfortable for them, but because that's what's comfortable for them, that's pro that's still better. If we're spectrally optimizing it, that's still going to be better than what they've currently been getting. And mm -hmm. I think that that's still a step in the right direction, so that we could still make a change in that person's life, even though. And and I don't think that I think that if it's too bright and they're uncomfortable, that defeats the whole point of what we're trying to do. Agreed, but I mean that's that the prescriptive nature of it is always. Um, let me. So is 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 the tuning? So your lamp, the the Skyview lamp, change literally changes color from you coordinate it. You set it. I don't know. What do you do? Do you set in the um, your latitude and longitude? Do you put your postal code? How does it know where you are? Yeah, I'm postal like, code. Um, postal and code. it knows, um, and it pulls out the the sunrise sunset schedules for you. Right. So the um, so it, 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 let me. I want to ask you this too as well. Is the actual dynamic changing of color part of the effect like that? Or is it just that's what nature is, so we're doing it that way? Or is there something to the the clouds in the sky and the color temperature changing and the warmness of a sunset that calms you? That well, It's like, oh, time to get up. And then it's, oh, it's yep. time to go to sleep. It's like, oh, where's the fire and whatever. Um, is there something to that, that that is adding to the effect or is that just cool? Yeah, no, it 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 um it is cool. Biologically speaking, <laughs> there's been uh there's been uh evidence that points that at dawn and dusk we're highly sensitive to the changes in blue light. There's mm -hmm. also a violet component that goes into those um those times of day that also drives another biological process that kind of just amplifies that that day night contrast. It's always about contrast. These are kind of things that bookend the fact that it's day or night. And that's actually a key component to what we throw in here. We kind of throw in the kitchen sink. We try to make it look cool. It's, it's you know, it's viscerally satisfying. But we also have done some things just to the, your previous point, like we do dynamic cloud cover in it. So that kind of color separation, that's a bright sky. And then it kind of dims down and goes to a single color and then kind of comes back up. And that that those dynamics are also important for helping with um, helping get the most out of it. So it's, it's really all kind of designed to give you the most. We don't try to itemize all the things that it does because then people get like really confused about what it is. But we throw them in there so that you could kind of just have something that's cool. And, and guess what? It also is biologically the best thing um, we could ever make for you. Just my gut tells me that, that there's something to the – the color and the and the thing. One more question. Does BIOS incorporate any of the near infrared um, spectrum that you seem to get from the sun and that you get from incandescent light bulbs, quite frankly? Is there any of that in your technology or is there plans to have that in your technology? Yeah, yeah. So we um so there's a, a mitochondrial process um that that takes in some of the red light. Um, so we hit that specifically as well. Um, that is also another thing that is like, I don't know, too too complicated for most people to to kind of um, understand. So we stick on the blue light. We don't talk about the twilight. We don't talk. We just talk about it being cool. We also have thrown in far red um, in this kind of uh, not so near infrared as some people are going, 
Mm -hmm. um, 660 nanometers is where um, a, a special photoreceptor in our skin, in our mitochondria, is looking for light. Um, so, so we pinpoint that, but we haven't gone enough outside of that band um, because it, I don't see a whole lot of biology out there. It's, it's an emerging thing. I, 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 you know, we've kind of, uh, we've had um, a couple people tell us about it. A couple people whisper in my ear an email saying, "Hey, man, this is real," and so we're starting to see there's so, there's something there's something there. We don't know what it is yet, but um, there's there's something to do with light and heat that are really the same thing, or they they cross into the same spectrum. So infrared mm -hmm. heat, you know, and heat from the sun, and this that there's they they kind of go together. And the, I think a lot of the effects, you know, that in the lower upper le levels of your skin, it penetrates in deeper. There's something going on there. And, and, and I just love this emerging science. And BIOS is at the forefront of it, Greg, Eric. So you should all go. What's the website for the auditing tool, Greg? Why don't we go to you first? Uh, it is BIOS. Well, Robert, do you have it right in front of you? BIOS lighting. Yeah. So, so the Institute to be an auditor, uh, we actually put that on our biosinstitute.org. So bios, B-I-O-S, institute, I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E dot org. Um, and then you'll see the, the circadian audit button right at the top there. Um, or you could go backslash circadian slash audit to get there. And, and it's a really cool program. Um, it's worth a try to even just kind of see what it's all about. Um, I, I really highly recommend everyone who, who wants to try to bet, better sell circadian lighting or human-centric lighting, wellness lighting, whatever we decide to call it, <laughs> um, give it a whirl. And, um, and I, I think it's an opportunity for, all, for us all to make the world a better place and, and sell more product, even to people that you've already sold to. Because I could guarantee you what you sold for energy savings isn't meeting the, it is, isn't meeting the criteria for biology. And that's important. And that's exactly what I feel too. Is that you know this is another sales tool for you. Even if you don't have as much interest in it right now, get interested in it. Dive into this. Take the program because once you have it, now you can sell that much more product. And that's what you're trying to do in lighting, right? Sell the product. That's right. You know? Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, nothing happens till someone sells something. And you know, I'll be taking that program, and so are the people working here. Um, we'll be taking it as well. And so that's a, an implicit endorsement. Um, the other thing too is, guys, we're just at the the, the, the the rocket NASA. Here comes the NASA comparison for you. The rocket's just on the launch pad here, folks. Jump on the nose cone when you can, because you don't want to be two, three years down the road here when things start to really take off, and then you're playing catch up. You want to get on right. right now. If you're a listener to this show, you're a contractor, whatever. Ninety minutes. What do you got? Who doesn't have ninety minutes to take a course, to start learning about this, start talking to customers about it, start to get the buzz out there. In two or three years from now, remember, you remember two thousand and ten, Greg? Oh, what are these LEDs? That about two thousand fifteen? <laughs> it was a shit show. So, mm -hmm. folks, bioslighting.com, uh, biosinstitute.org. Dot org. Yep. I. Uh, dot org. Yep. Biosinstitute.org. Right. And of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Check out LS Evolve. We have lots of stuff on this kind of thing there as well, including the power of queuing, which is also in this space as well. And that table lamp, Skyview, what it's doing is queuing. That's what it's doing. It's telling you it's morning. It's telling you it's midday. It's telling you it's night. It's giving you a signal. So go to LA, check out LS Evolve on nail.org. And of course, our convention, Greg, coming up in November. It's going to happen. That's right. Las November Vegas. Four or five. Vegas, yep. That's right. But for right now, folks, if you made it to the end, uh, on behalf of Robert Soler, Greg Eric, and Michael Colligan, this has been the Get a Grip on Lighting Podcast signing off.